Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's time for our news review and one of the topical stories we're going to be looking at, that explosion in Apiate and uh, the resultant mess, chaos uh, that has ensued. We'll bring you all the details about that. We've heard from Mr. President. We've heard from former President John Bremani Mahami, uh, Mahama, I should say. And uh, where do we go from uh, here? Now, uh, just, just focus on the fact that later on the show, we're going to be hearing uh, from the Western Regional Minister, together with others, uh, the Toronto Mines. Uh, their representative will be speaking to us as well on uh, this uh, matter. But let me come into the studio now and engage uh, Manuel Kranting, my colleague who joins me this morning for the news review. A very good morning, Manuel. Good morning. Uh, uh, on a morning when you say Mahami instead of... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah, they were terrible from uh, last night with, like, um, yesterday's explosion yeah. in Apiate. I mean, mm. terrible, terrible way, you know, to end a week. You know, the, the, the year 2022, it's come with its own... Mm. Uh, mm. Different levels and different strands of um, tragedies. But, of course... From road, accidents, uh, from road accidents to, to gang clashes. The, the, the gang clashes in Nima, which we're going exactly, to get into extensively. Exactly, and now exactly. this, this explosion. You know, attacks on radio stations. And, and exactly, and radio. Stations. But, yeah. but, but we've, I, I don't know, the, these explosions, from mm -hmm. time to time, I mean, it may take some years, but then we get back, whether it's gas explosions mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. explosions of this sort. And the interesting thing, even before we take what the papers say, the interesting bit is that in 2017, mm -hmm. there was an incident. Yeah which took the interior minister to this specific place. Area. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And here we are back. I mean, it, it appears they did a few things. I don't know whether <laughs> for show, sure, you know how, but, but here we are back at the same point, which means there are problems that were never really resolved. Exactly, and it's raised questions about the conveyance of the materials, the explosives. Right. Um, we're told that, I mean, th there are regulations, uh, you know, um, in, in the law that actually stipulate how explosives of such nature mm. must be conveyed or transported from point A to point B. The questions that were, you know, asking uh, uh, are that were these regulations, you know, um, followed, to the, followed to the letter? Right. You know, wh was there a weak link anywhere? Was there, you know, an oversight? Was there a deliberate, you know, dereliction of duty on anybody's part? And these are, these are questions. And it, it, it hurts that almost all the time would have to, you know, do a post-mortem of these incidents after they do happen, when really, really, almost all the time, the handwritings have been pretty glaring, you know, on the wall. And, and so we're told that uh, the Land and Natural Resources Minister um, is, is visiting the ground, a couple of high-profile people are also visiting the ground, even as search and rescue efforts are intensified for people who may be trapped under the rumble or, you know, within the debris and all of that, Ben. Well, so we'll bring you details of that. But sh lest I forget, I just wanted to, you know, bring up this bit. Uh, Manuel, I don't know. I think we need a certain education mm. about how to deal with such situations as a general public, mm -hmm. how to react. Exactly. And, and in one of the videos, and, and uh, we'll see whether we can put that video uh, on for you to take a look. Uh, you see people actually approaching, Moving towards, yes. approaching yeah. the exploded yeah. Yeah. vehicle. And, and, and if you watch carefully, so a lot of people are in front. I hear some of them are part of those who are actually very badly right. injured. Yes. They are approaching the vehicle and there's someone even in the rear, at the rear, mm -hmm. with a camera mm -hmm. filming, filming the approach. And then there's another explosion, yes. which is to be expected. Whether you're talking of gas, whether you're talking of explosives, Absolutely. Absolutely. it will go and touch other things. Absolutely. And there'll be you know, subsequent Absolutely. rollover explosions. Mm -hmm. And you see the effect because the person with the camera, if you look at how it the thing was, exactly. it, it tells you that. Actually, exactly. I, mean, I don't know whether the person was flying or rolling or whatever. But I mean, there are several examples to learn from. You remember the Lebanon explosion and indeed how you'd most likely have a first one. And most of the times, these first explosions are pretty minimal in their impact. Small explosions here and there because it's just catching up. Yep. And then almost always, there's a follow-up explosion. With, and especially because... This is pretty much a mining and and, and that video that video is on your on your screens now. You can just take a look at it mm. and and tell us what you think. Look 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 at that. 
That is the exploded vehicle. And people are actually approaching. approaching and look it. at this. Look at this. The follow-up. Look. I mean, can you believe it? Yes. Uh, I, I, I is, don't is know. It, Manuel, tell me. Is it curiosity? Or is it the, the bits that we've all become very, you know, mm, let's film it let's for film social it, media. Let's film it for social media. You lose media. your life. I, exactly. And, I mean, there are different strands to this particular conversation, Ben. You know, within our space, emergency response mm. is not, of course, we've seen in the past couple of uh, years an attempt to improve it. And we commend the, the first responders and their managers for that. Mm. But in Ghana, emergency, emergency response is not as prompt as it should be. Mm. And so there's this communal feeling that, you know, when there's an incident, there's an emergency, let's move in, mm. try to assist the people who are, you know, trapped in there. And but, but, almost always but you girl, have... this is an explosion. I, I, and, and you ben, don't even know what is in there. What, what whether it's some, explosive, whether there are bombs, whether there are dynamite. Whatever, whatever exactly. I doubt exactly. the people approaching knew that these were explosives in exactly. there. You don't need to know. Exactly. Don't go anywhere near it. Exactly. And, 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 and that's, that's what we need to, you know, um, no, I was just talking about that uh, communal sense that makes people want to. But, you know, first aid, in, in, when we are training for first aid, they tell you that if you are not trained, don't go near it. Even if it is your family, your so family you relation. Do more harm if, than exactly. Good. And in this instance, anyway. worse harm, actually. Um, we are told, but, but as of 5 p.m. last night, yeah. um, 17, 17 people, people have been confirmed dead, 59 others. Uh, you know, battling for their lives with various uh, degrees of injury. And our hearts and prayers really are with them, right. even as the search and rescue efforts are advanced um, on the ground, Ben. And, and, and this morning, we shall try to interact with uh, the Western Regional Minister mm. to give us a scoop on that. We'll have our correspondent in the Western Region, in Atalia Fransa, as well, join the co uh, conversation. And we'll also hear from the Toronto mm. mines in uh, here, though not directly involved, we know about their, 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 their entire you know, link to Connection, all of this. Yeah. But let's say a very good morning to Regina Amegan, who also joins uh, the conversation. Regina, a very good morning to you. If you can hear me, Regina. Uh, you would have to unmute, Regina, so we can actually hear you. Yes, but can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Great. Okay, so uh, just by way of introduction, uh, Regina is a lawyer and commander, uh, head of product, projects and enterprise development at the Economic Fighters League, and um, she joins us as well. Regina, right before we move on, we've just been talking about this incident. At, Thank you. Uh, Thank you for having me. Right. Right before we, we, we get into the papers, we've been talking about this tragedy that has hit Apiate and the Daily Graphic um, captures it aptly. Fatal explosion at Apiate. Community wiped out president commissaries with uh, family. And, and just to give you a bit of an update, uh, tragedy hit Apiate, a farming community between Bogosu and uh, Bodie in the Prestia Huni Valley municipality in the western uh, region yesterday following an explosion that reduced the entire settlement to ground zero. A vehicle carrying a quantity of mining explosives to the Trano mines collided with a motorcycle, resulting in the detonating of the explosives, leveling the entire community. A ravaging blaze accompanied by a plume of smoke spread from the point of the explosion, scattering hundreds of residential and commercial buildings in the community. The number of casualties was not immediately known, but like we were saying, as, as of, of 17 five. hours yesterday, exactly. 17 people yeah. injured and what, 59? 59. Uh, 17 people dead, dead and 59, and 59 others injured. Uh, losing their lives. Your, your quick reaction, Regina. This isn't the first time we've heard of an explosion. What's your reaction? Yes, uh, I think this is a very sad uh, Hello, Regina. Right, so, so the link to Regina is uh, not so good right now. We'll try to reconnect with you, Regina. And worst case scenario, if, if Zoom simply won't work, uh, we would do maybe a phone call so we can mm. just mm. Uh, have your take on the matter. But um, so that is the sad development mm. in Apiate. Uh, of course, today we'll find out when we speak to the minister, for example, the Rexec. Rexec. How, how soon are they meeting? On in, in fact, what Interior told. minister, mm. is he going to show up? Mm. Mr. President, I mean, mm. so some people have lambasted, lampooned the president mm. about the fact that 
the Keta issue, he didn't really show up, and on this one. So what we, we want to see whether in this instance he's going to actually, uh, as we say, show face. Show face. In, in, the, in, in fact, we're told that there's a high powered meeting currently underway in um, the Bogoso um, municipality, right. currently with the uh, MUSEC mm -hmm. and external uh, you know, security um, capos also uh, in that meeting. This is uh, as, as part of the emergency response, uh, you know, of the um, of the country to the situation. Uh, but but, but uh, Ben, you're making reference to, you know, previous incidents like this. In fact, we've had an incident like this in in Saum, Piambo. I'm sure you remember the Piambo incident. Mm. Uh, there was a quarry that uh, ah, you know okay. e yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so yeah, 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 yeah. The, these incidents really happen. And the problem is the response and the measures that we take in and, and you've said preventing crucial. response. Exactly. You know, one one reason I see that a lot of the time, even when there are such incident, incidents, incidents, but how we react here to how other countries react, mm -hmm. the timeliness of it can save lives. It can be the difference between yes, injury or death. Yeah. And and oftentimes yeah. our reaction time is so poor. Exactly. You remember last year when we had a lot of fires in you know, different, different areas. areas. A lot of the time people were complaining about the, the lethargic response. responses yeah. and all of that. Mm. So you're spot on mm. in, in, mm. in that instance. And, and here, I mean, in, in just a few hours, we've lost, what, 17 lives? Yeah, and, 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 and of those who are go severely up. injured, only God knows how many more, uh, God forbid, but how many more could, could mm. also meet mm. their eyes. Mm. And, and Ben, I was just going to take you through the Minerals Please and do. Mining Explosives Regulation 2012 LI um, 2177. In fact, this particular regulation details and it's quite extensive to the end that um, the conveyance of explosives in fact the, the regulation preempts a lot of uh, these possibilities and makes uh, you know uh, uh, um, preparations for them for instance regulation 105 um, route and speed limit um, says that a person who transports explosives by road shall convey the explosives by the most direct route and by the quickest and safest means. Subregulation 1 does not apply within a city and so on, but it says that a local authority may prescribe the route to be used by vehicles with transport explosives within its area of jurisdiction. Now, a person who drives a vehicle that is transporting um, explosives shall not drive faster than 60 kilometers per hour. Mm. Um, hours for conveying explosive by route. A person who transports explosives in a motor vehicle shall transport explosives between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Now, vehicles to be accompanied by competent person and police escort. Uh, a person who transports explosives in a road vehicle shall ensure that explosives are under a direct control of a person who has a certified or, uh, if, who has a certificate, if you like, um, of competency in explosives in accordance with Regulation 15 2. Mm. And without limiting this particular sub regulation, a person who transports explosives in a road vehicle shall ensure that the transportation is done under a police escort. So there are so many questions to ask. Was there a police escort? Do they have the necessary certification? certification. The person conveying the exactly. Product? Uh, as for the road bit, it's a bit problematic, the most direct and all of mm. that, Charlie. Mm. We know with mm. our roads, it's mm. not exactly the best mm. of situations. But there was, there was a, a follow-up point after the roads. You mentioned something else that I'd like to get to. So uh, after, after the roads, you talk about the hours. Um, no, I think it's the speed limit. The speed limit, exactly. The 60 kilometer, the 60 thing, kilometer per hour. I mean, who checks on that? Mm. Sometimes you see some of these vehicles, tankers, you know, using, uh, conveying... Uh, also, some materials, products yeah. and, and things. Yeah. And if you look at how they are going, why is that true? You you must exactly. move away exactly. to exactly. avoid getting. Ah, anyway, so uh, let's move on to other issues. We shall come back uh, to to this bit when we get Regina. Deepening consensus on e levy. Government meets key stakeholders. Mm. I don't know uh, what you, your expectations are, Manuel. In fact, uh, the, Ga the Ghanaian e Times is reporting that the telcos have reduced their momo charges by twenty five percent to reduce the impact of the e-levy mm. and that's according to the finance minister and 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 he hints of even worse implications than just the fetch downgrade of ghana's credit ratings from uh, a, a b to a b minus 
if B minus with, with, with a negative with, with a negative which, which, which is not you know very good. <laughs> I just saw you know mm. by Simmons as well uh, on Twitter talking about this fact that this is actually the first time we're we're, mm. we're getting to this level, mm. which in itself is problematic because some people have put details out there on social media which are not necessarily uh, true. You know exactly. when, when these things happen, we try to play games with them depending on where we sit. Uh, on the political spectrum, but exactly, it, it is what it is. So you, you, you want to hear for, from for there. you as an ordinary citizen. Mm. Uh, how, how does this wash on you? Yeah, twenty-five percent and, and all of that. Okay for you. Well, you see, my, my problem really is not with whether you're charging one point five percent or one point seven percent or one percent, or there's a twenty-five percent reduction in the momo charges. It's about the, you know. Sticking to what you say you're going to use the money for. Ah. Because, for instance, we know that road tolls were purposefully introduced to repair the road, fix the road. You see, in fact, at Aimeza toll booth, there's a Buipe toll booth. Mm. But a lot of the toll booths on the... On the Tema stretch, exactly. there are so many of them. And you see that this toll booth is right after a huge pothole. Sometimes, galleys, really. Mm. And they are not fixed. And I'm saying that, how are you taking these road tools? You say you're using them to fix the road. Not so far from this point where you take the money, mm. you have not fixed it. Indication of the worst happenings on other roads. But, are, but are, road tools, roads that have been scrapped. Road tools, yeah, but but the, the, road tools, the, yeah, the point no, I'm making is the, that... There people have said that. We're raking in about 200,000 every day. Exactly. Exactly. Now, now, exactly. All of that is now, now all of that is gone. And then the point I'm making is that, if when you were taking the road tools, you, you, were not, you were not using the road tools for what they were intended to have been used for, mm. then I do not have any you know, confidence that you are taking e-levy to provide what infrastructure? To provide, no, I do not. And let's, let's uh, not forget the Auditor General's report. Exactly, of 12, wastage. 12 billion Ghana cities of waste. Of if waste. Add, if you add some of the levies and taxes and that we're looking at now, the, the, the six plus billion <laughs> for the e-levy e -levy, and the others, if you add it could give you all more. of them, it, it could give you 12 more. billion could have saved us it could give you more. all of this. And so, and that's, that's the point that I'm coming from, that you don't need e-levy necessarily. Cut the wastage, cut the corruption, right. you know, and, and you, we will not even be having a conversation about e-levy. Okay. Let, let me bring in uh, Regina now, Regina Omega, uh, who is with the Economic Fighters League. She joins us via the phone lines. Regina, good morning once more. Can you hear me? Morning, Bert. Thank you. Great. All right. So, uh, we've been talking about uh, the explosion in Apiatse, and I'll, I'll just link that for you to... Another incident uh, that I know, Manuel, you talk mm. extensively about. Police intensify efforts to arrest Nima Mamubi violence ring leaders. What are your thoughts on these two uh, raging matters, Regina? You can put them together. Yes, thank you, Ben. Uh, I think first and foremost will be the explosion. Right. Uh, we've had the series of the explosions that are starting uh, uh, from gas and all, but this is the first time I think we are having a mining explosion to essentially wipe out a whole community. Mm. I think that aside from looking at the way forward, what we have to do is to make sure that we are able to compensate the police family adequately. This is the time that we need to have all stakeholders on board in order to have a punitive measure against the, co the companies involved, right. including even the mines, because they are vicariously also liable at the end of the day for so what um, okay. We need to put in place very stringent punitive measures that are going forward. Anybody in those lines of uh, oppression will right. know that these are people's lives are at stake. And when I, on social media, I see people saying that, yes, when the explosions happen, people shouldn't have gone uh, near the... Right. Uh, what, what is your take on that? But this is uh, the Ghanaian, the average Ghanaian thinks, oh, an explosion has occurred, there might be survivors. What are we going to do? Right. Are we going to just leave them to die because we do not know what's burning? Mm. When, the, when the explosions were being carried, they didn't follow the radar regulations. If the police had been escorting that vehicle with explosives, everybody would know that, okay, this is, this is it. Uh, police are already involved. The police would have blocked uh, the, 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 the people from coming close, and they wouldn't have been affected. But we do not share that responsibility. And then when the normal Ghanaian um, human nature that's come and help. We don't blame them for being illiterate and not doing the right thing. So I think we need to put in very stringent measures. We need to put in punitive measures so that these people are adequately compensated. They should be adequately compensated because it is through no fault of theirs that something exploded in their community. Chirango Maya shouldn't sit 
and say that look, we have no, we are, because they are just bringing their minds to a place and our source, they know. We need to make sure that they feel it. Because you must ensure that the people you are giving your duties to perform it very well. Mm. Maximum or the company involved has to be Maximum, very well actually. Mm, exactly. right. And then that will show, that, that, that will send a signal to any other uh, business or company in this operation. Okay. Yes, the raw incidents happen here, we had competition, but competition, how much? Right. This is people's life you are talking about. The competition should be clear, should be open. People should know this is the first of the reason. We plain dilly dally with these incidents. This is come around. We shouldn't get the people. We shouldn't care about the family in Yamaha and Mantra again. We should quantify it to the loss, the loss of economic life, the loss of family. Don't mm. bring that oh, we must make sure that each life is very critical. Each right. life is paid for the end. So right. for me, aside looking at the fact that these companies going forward should abide by the regulations, we must make sure that they compensate adequately. The okay. word here is adequately and sufficiently. And each Ghanaian life today, it should be on full public display for each person to know how much each Ghanaian life costs so that these companies involved can pay it access. That, for me, is where I'll go with the um, explicit. So, sounds sounds as though you were wearing your legal cap, and you are a lawyer. You, you sound <laughs> almost as though you were representing uh, the group there. Tragic matter, but, but very important points you're making. You know, adequate compensation, because, Manuel, uh, mm -hmm. these are people... Don't you forget, there will be breadwinners among those who have died and all of that. The economic, the, the spiral of socioeconomic effects, we can't even begin to quantify as we sit here in our studio. What the ripple effects will be, we can't even... And even so, if, so if could, there's going to be any compensation and all of that, I mean, the Toronto Mines, Maxim, Ghana Limited and all of that. Uh, recently, we're talking about that oil spill, oil spill. you know, mm -hmm. and, and what the likely consequences should exactly. be. I think the... When we begin to really clamp down on some of these institutions, when they are proven to have been at fault and, and you delineated some of the regulations, yeah. then I think they would get more responsible. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was just going to say that even if we could quantify, in this instance we can't, even if we you can't, could, you can't place any price tag <laughs> you know, price on it. You can only mitigate Exactly. Right. And, and the point I'm making is, even if you could quantify it, there are people who have clearly been derelict in their duties right. as regarding this particular matter. In fact, we had the in in uh, we had the um, the uh, atomic. They were not to be cited in residential areas. It's still happening. It, it's still happening, mm -hmm. and you you, you see, uh, uh, perish the thought for us to have another explosion of a fuel station tomorrow within a community or residential area. We'll be back having the same conversation. People are seeing people who have jobs, who are paid to ensure that these fuel stations are not cited in the areas that they are being cited. They are seeing and allowing them to go on. Mm. Just like, uh, you know, in, in some of the instances that this morning we are discussing, clear the relation of duty. And, and, and we, we have not confirmed, but as we are saying, uh, questions about police escort, Questions the certification about certification of the speed limit. Speed limit because because yes, a even the route crosses you and you are trying to, but at what speed? And, and that will be even difficult to exactly. To, and even the route, to, you know, talk about the route that is to be used for. Was it the safest? Was it the safest? And it's supposed to have been, you know, um, um, designated by an authority. Mm. Did, our, did our authority know that there was a transportation of such explosives? You know, uh, before I bring in Regina as we move on to the Nima incident, that also mm. brings to mind, have you noticed how these big trucks, mm. the, the ones that typically convey these, instead of being more, uh, you know, charitable, because they are huge, they are big, and a lot of these trucks have a lot of blind spots. Mm -hmm. There are so many so things many they, can't, they, they can't, can't, they can't see. see you know, clear. But they are rather the bullies on the road. Exactly. They see you and they want to. It's basically you, you, you move aside, move aside or, or we run over you. Exactly. No, that's, that's how it is. Exactly. And, and I think that mentality in itself, I don't know what training these people get, but, but that in itself is problematic because mm -hmm. sometimes the accidents occur because they are simply being reckless. They don't care about the rest of you. Mm -hmm. They feel we are big. And we have this. Who you me? Yes, you it are. It will affect you. Exactly. It will affect you, so you move away. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's that's uh, what we're talking about. Anyway, so police intensify efforts to arrest Nima Mobi violence ringleaders, and and there's a reason we're focusing on these two matters. They are the biggest stories. I mean, we we've had uh, this week, and and that's why we're actually 
throwing so much light on them. Before Regina comes in, just paint for us. You have been on the ground. Exactly. Uh, Nima Mam will be the turf war there. What was the latest you can share with us? Well, we know that yesterday the Zongo chiefs um, held a crunch meeting with the hierarchy of the police. Arrested. And you have, um, in the words of the Zongo chiefs, the imams, the opinion leaders, the the chiefs themselves, the, Almost the politicians intervening and saying that, oh, you know, he won't do that against my boy yeah. and, and all of yeah. that. And yeah. then, some way, somehow, these boys are released back into the community. And, and, and the possibility uh, of... The possibility of... Absconding. Uh, absconding, you know, escalations, because there are a lot of reprisals in these gang clashes. Mm. Uh, you know, nobody wants to accept defeat, for want of better It's basically, you do me, I do you. Exactly. That's the way it works. Exactly. And so, if I lose to you today, I see you tomorrow, it's a new, it's, it's, it's we a really new episode. And we come back exactly. Mm. And so, th there's a call for the police to stamp its, uh, you know, grounds and make sure that... Um, they, they do not put a human face to these crimes because these are violent crimes. People have deep machete wounds in their back. I, 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 their... <laughs> I, I, I saw one and I just had to turn away. <laughs> and, and so when these things happen, you don't say, he's my son, he's my boy. He needs to pay for the North Municipal Assembly to essentially, and this was almost like um, in, in the Kenya city, they say the peace junction between the Katanga boys and then the yeah. Kunti boys. This was the border between the two communities, Mamubi and Nima. There was a police post there, and it's been there for over a year. It's not been operationalized. And the Zungu chiefs are asking that it is, as a matter of urgency, operationalized. There's a reaction from the police that says that, you know what, the sighting of the police post is not conducive and we can't put our men in there right. and so we cannot operationalize it mm -hmm. but all in all we know that there's been you know an you know an, an increase in their uh, efforts by the police and their patrols on the ground the arrested people have moved from seven to nine yeah. uh, in 24 hours after the incident and there's there's a 20,000 the bounty, the 20, on the head, bounty on uh, of these ring leaders who are told uh, by the police Kumoji, one Kumoji right. and one Bombo yeah. as they are codenamed in the area and so um, that's the latest. Talking about intelligence and how we, we should have known, I mean Professor exactly. Kwesi Enning said that we should have known this was going to happen and the undercurrents are there. I always go yes. back to the root causes. It's always similar Look, really. <laughs> apart from gangsterism and all of that it doesn't just spring up whether you're talking of the mafia in Italy and how they or, and how they got even into the United States Chicago and way back and there's always there are factors exactly. and in this instance some of the the most basic ones bread and butter is bread and butter reasons. if you are at a certain level and someone comes to tell you that oh go and pick up a machete and you would think twice because of what boons you have but you leave them at this level and politicians use them for political capital sometimes even you would find other leaders in society mm -hmm. using them mm -hmm. Land guardism, how did it come about? Yeah, some look of you that they'll, and they'll go and do certain things they shouldn't. So, I mean, we know the problems. We are not addressing the root problems. Well, we, the CEO we'll do of, all the fancy talking. But. <laughs> the CEO of the Zongo Development Fund, Ben Abdullah, has a response to that. He says that, you know what, government is ruling out a lot of intervention programs, skills, uh, build, skills training, capacity building efforts, and all of those. But... The youth there are just not... Times when it comes to rape and the others, we see this happen. Oh, oh, Facheno is a community mm -hmm. member. In this instance, it is this violent crime as well. And, and we are back to it. Religious leaders, other leaders in the community saying, oh, this is my boy, this is my person, this is my relation. Uh, how, how do you react to that? Well, Ben, I think um, you, you, you guys have actually um, set the ball rolling on identifying the root causes. Right. But most importantly, if you look at the history of the mafia and most of these gangs, it all stems out not necessarily from the economics, but right. it, it stems out from the justice angle. Mm. When people feel that they are not able to get justice, they are not able to get, they are, they are, not, they are not duly assessed when a wrong is done against them, right. then they join these mafias. Mm. Because you, you, you realize that when uh, people, a group of people have been wronged or uh, someone has, a crime has been committed against someone and the police are not able to deliver justice or the community is not able to deliver justice. These 
voted their gang, knowing well that this gang will, will go and, and deliver the justice they want, a tooth for a tooth and eye for eye. So right. you realize that this is a prosperous economy, like in, the, in America, you can't say that the gangs or mafias were because of unemployment. No. It was because they were not getting the justice due them. The, most of the Italian mafias, you, you go in there and you realize that it's because they didn't trust the police system. They didn't trust the court system. They mm. didn't trust that the society or the community in which they were in could give them the justice they wanted. So people, if the people believe that there's an authority that will be able to deliver justice for them, if mm. the gang, if the first gang who may, might have been wrong, so that the police could step in and right wrong, or the, 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 the community machinery could step in and right wrong, do you think right. they would have retaliated? No. So what, what, what is the, the psyche of the people is what we have to look at. You can have 2,000 or a million economic interventions, but mm. if the people do not trust the system delivering it, if right. the people do not trust the whole justice delivery in right. their communities, they will always run back to their guns. You can disband these guns to speak, give them economic uh, activity to engage it. But right. when an issue comes, that demands justice, and you are not able to meet that threshold, they run back to their guns. Because they believe that that is where they're able to get their response from. Right. So, uh, aside the fact that the uh, the civil development authority and all are doing extremely well, they mm -hmm. need to partner with the Ghana police to be able to measure and then change the psyche of the people. Right. That is where we have to start the conversation from. You talk with these people, they, uh, some of these people in the communities, not just in Yima Mamoudi, you come to Ashama, some, some of the some of the ticket slams in Tema. You engage mm -hmm. these people and they say that, look, the police are even more corrupt than some of our gang members. Or the people, the so-called opinion leaders are more corrupt than the gang members. Mm -hmm. They do not believe that these people are able to deserve justice for them. Or these people can right wrongs where it's committed. So right. we should go deeper. We should understand the cycle of the people. We should, we should give them a platform where they can right. put in their confidence. If the people are not confident in the particular system, trust you me, they would, they would create a shadow system which will work for them. Okay. And that's why we need to not just look at the economic part. We don't need to do window dressing on this issue. We need to go deep down, investigate it, and understand the cycle of the people and understand why they would rather choose to call on them to fight right. their part for right. them and not go to the police. The police and the community leaders should also come out and show, and show, and show, their, and show their willingness to support. They need to be fair. They need to be tough. Right. And we should see the 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 appeal. Very, yes. very important so, point. Right. Really, how do you how do you expect to appease the grievances of these people? Mm. That is why they will quickly resolve to France because they know that in a in a, in a minute these things are going to be solved, and right. whoever attacks them is going to get their, 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 their um, or it's also going to be attacked accordingly. But then, so essentially, let's get to the psyche of the people. Let's deliver justice in a timely manner. Let's right. be fair. Let our, our, our police and our community leaders be responsible and responsive right. to the price of the youth. It's not everything that we say, oh, it's just a youth for exuberance. No. Sometimes you need to understand that the, these people are not adults. As so long as they are not uh, less than 18, they are adults. And they are the people who are going to be leading and who are going to be uh, uh, working as, uh, 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 as opinion leaders in the field. Right. So you have to start treating them as one. Well. And you have to start putting in place measures to let them show leadership. These young leaders they are looking at. How can you rope them in? Yes, they might have been caused a lot of issues. But then how can you rope them in? Because now the youth are listening to them. Their leaders are listening, their members are listening to them and not to the police. Mm. That's why they are not giving them up. How are you going to rope them in in order to make sure that these things are done right? Yes, right. there are instances in other countries where uh, these young leaders are rather looking. They become part of the police unit, and then they are able to help the the the, the communities and uh, do things accordingly. They are able to uh, cut back on some of these issues because trust you me, these these gang fights and these uh, uh, mafia fights didn't start today. It's long years ago. We've been doing a lot of intervention, but how has this intervention worked? Big question. Uh, in place mechanisms to mm. give, let the people trust the system. Right. And how will the people trust the system? By trusting somebody who is one of their own. So, okay. yes, we are looking for these leaders. We are, we are trying to get them and punish them. Uh, all. But then again, when you are ready to lead are you sure another set of leaders will not crop up? 
Regina, we're, we're, we're going to have to leave it here. But uh, very important points you've made, and, and justice. I mean, the undercurrents, the root causes, apart from the financial matters, justice as uh, well. Manuel, I think we're on the same page mm, on, on, on that bit. We have to go, but I just felt, to be fair, I mean, the, the, these are the, uh, the, the major stories. Mm -hmm. Manuel, just give us the topical headlines from the rest of the papers, just in about some 30 seconds and less. So, so uh, most of them are, of course, are reporting that deadly explosion in Bogo. So the Daily Guide has other stories of pursuing strong growth. President Iku Fado, 20% um, budget expenditure suspended and 20,000 bounty on two Nima gangsters, Kumoji and Bombo. Also, government to rationalize 20% of expenditure in 2022 budget. A Daily Statement reporting and clock sack cause of its strike. The publisher says, Chiefs caution radio are down but condemn attack on station. NPP youth, Lord uh, John Kuma for ultra modern party office and economy not doing badly. That's according to the president, um, Ikufuado. The Lance Ministry set to probe a piazza explosion right. um, on the front page of the um, publisher, the Ghanaian publisher. The find our wrap up okay. with uh, says, more than 10 feet dead in explosion. President consoles families of victims, mobile money transactions hit 953.2 billion right. in 2021, almost a trillion uh, Ghana cities. And then Clocksack also calling off a strike, collected cat sort for 300 bed pediatric hospital at okay. Ben. Speaking of the Catholic Church, uh, just to wrap the conversation, former Pope failed to act over abuse, new report finds. It was all over the BBC yesterday. Um, uh, former Pope Benedict XVI, Joseph Ratzinger, while he was still a cardinal. That's what the report suggests. And then Church Stampede kills 29 worshippers in Monrovia. That story has also been on uh, the international radar for a while now. This is how we'll uh, bring the curtains down on our news review this morning. But uh, thank you very much, Manuel Pranting, for joining the conversation. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure here. It's been refreshing having it's you, absolutely. actually. And there's also been uh, Regina Amega, Commander, Head of Projects and Enterprise Development of the Economic Fighters League. She's a lawyer as well. Regina, thank you for joining. Thank you very much, Ben. Okay. So we, we're done with the news review. Expect a lot more coming uh, your way up next after the break. Stay tuned.